They were 11 and 5. They made the playoffs. They think that if Michael Brockers had been healthy in the second half, maybe they could have beaten the Falcons. Granted, no excuses. They didn't. So what now this year? Is there expectations? Yes, sir. I, I think they make it to the Super Bowl. It'll be the final play before the two minute warning, and it's intercepted. Marcus Peters! They are that good. I think they are right on pace to continue to get better, Jim. He's hit and dragged down for a sack. And a tiny, it's a, and a tiny look. What are you going to do with these guys? This Rams team, they beat you up up front on both sides of the football. They can run the football. They have great pass defense. I mean, pick your poison with this team. He fired right side by Gerald Everett. Caught the shoulder at the 10. They're the best team in the NFC. By the way, they have on their team presently the reigning offensive and defensive players of the year. And the Rams clinch back-to-back -back division titles. To be able to get that done to accomplish back-to-back -back West championships is something that we cherish. To win your division and guarantee yourself a home playoff game is, is something that we're very excited about. They give to Gurley. Huge lane middle. The 25. Breaks left. 15-10. Gurley the touchdown. Two coaching masterminds at the top of their craft going at it for the third time in what will be a rubber match and the biggest stakes of all, the Super Bowl awaiting them. For a 57-yard try to win the NFC Championship game, the hold is down, the kick clears the line, and Greg Zerline sends the Rams to the Super Bowl! Jared Goff of the NFC champion, Los Angeles Rams is our guest. And you and I crossed paths last year in Minneapolis out at a social function. I, I, I don't imagine I'll see you out on Saturday night in Atlanta. This is a business trip. How long will that reality take to set in? Scott, I hope to not see you this time around. But, uh, <laughs> I understand. It, it's starting to set in. Uh, it's starting to set in now, and um, just it's a dream come true. We're going to the Super Bowl. Get a chance to compete for a world title, and um, it's unbelievable, man. It's a great feeling. Like I said, we bring this championship home, and now, like I said, I told y'all in the earlier season. Now we're here. Started from the bottom. Now we're here, baby. You're yeah, there. Super Bowl champs on the way. I'm waiting for my ring. I'm sizing myself up already. So let's do it. I'm waiting on next Sunday. It's gonna be a wrap. We be going down a, with a parade, y'all. Coming up. There we go. Who's house? Who's house? Who's house? Three years ago, we were at the Forum bringing this team back to LA to see thousands, tens of thousands of people here cheering on the NFC champions with rituals of Who's House, the new stadium in the background, and so proud of the players, the coaches, the staff and the fans for the turnout. Awesome moment for the franchise, but hopefully the first of many send-offs we have to the Super Bowl. We've been checking things off, and make no mistake about it, got a lot of respect for the Patriots, but we're going there to get this last check. talked a lot of storylines. Um, we will continue to talk about uh, some of the obvious ones, but I think the interesting question is about the coaching matchup, right? Who you give the edge to in this one. When you give Sean McVay and Bill Belichick two weeks to prepare, who has the edge, Dion? Long way to go. First tick, check it off, man. Sean McVay is a young, innovative coach. This might be, you know, the future what we're seeing with Sean McVay and this, this Rams offense and the way they operate. Touchdown, 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 LA! No! Great job! Offense, defense, special teams, picking each other up. Give me a whoa if you're with me. Yep, I'm getting ready for Japan. You awesome. made a great 57 yard field goal that we are talking about again, again, again. Tell me about it. Uh, Championship. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Uh, just a, any, just a kick like any other. Uh, just, just a little bit bigger stage, I suppose. To throw, settles into the pocket. Arm is hit. Ball is in the air. Middle of the field. It is intercepted. Picked off at the on the sideline. When you get that interception, you think, okay, we got a chance here. Um, so you get your warm up kicks into the net. Talk to Jake and Johnny about what snap count we want to go on. And then once you step on the field, all of that goes away. The score, 23 apiece. And if Zerline hits this field goal, the Rams are going to the Super Bowl. The hold is down. The kick clears the line. And Greg Zerline.
2012. Uh, take me back to 2012. You guys came in the same year. 2012, I think all of our worlds were spinning a little bit. I mean, Jake had a brand new coaching staff. He'd been on the team one year. And so Greg and I were really trying to lean a lot on Jake's knowledge, and he was still pretty fresh in the game. We just followed Jake around like little puppies. Uh, <laughs> probably got pretty sick of us just padding around behind him saying, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, we still do that. Yeah, we still do that. <laughs> yeah, nothing's changed. Yeah, I mean, I went yeah. from year one being the, the rookie with no idea what I was doing to – all of a sudden, I was the veteran immediately, and then brought in Bones. And luckily, I think if anyone was leading us, that was the guy. And luckily, we still have him today because he's the best. First snap, last snap, everything in between. Be the best, baby. We put a premium on that phase of the game. It's really, truly a three-phase approach, not just offense, defense, special teams. Like, you know, it's really somewhere where we can be attacking and make an impact on the game, and guys practice throughout the week knowing that. The hold is down, the kick clears the line, and Greg Zerline sends the Rams to the Super Bowl! So you feel comfortable that you don't even have time to think about anything else, so it's kind of a calming thing, um, just going out there and doing the thing you've done a thousand times before. You're in the lead! Y'all know it! We all know it! We all know it! He won us this event! You play the game to win championships, and what we set out to do and we're here and so now we just got to get it done. A lot of seasons where this was not a possibility to be able to share it with these guys means a lot and with Coach Fossil and um, the rest of the guys in the locker room that work so hard to, to make our jobs easy. You win a championship with a team it's like okay that group of guys gets to like live on as the world champions from that season. That, to me that's probably the coolest part of it. Too, so there you go. <laughs> we, well, you know, before the season, we had to pick a team that we thought was going to win the Super Bowl. So I got to stick with the team that I picked to win the Super Bowl. Let's see. Uh oh. Uh oh. No. <laughs> Love you, man. Yes, sir. Hey, just so you know, they got me Mike today. Okay. Break a leg. Cool, babe. Feel good, man. This is gonna be fun. Yeah, it is. Hey, mama. Hey, baby. How you doing? You good? This will be good. Hey, big boy. You good? I love you. Get out of here. Get it. We were playing third round of playoffs. Game's in the line, we call a timeout, and the coaches call a play, and Sean has an idea for a better play, and we end up scoring on that play, and he walks in the end zone. And for a guy that's that age to have the confidence, not only to have the idea, but to say it as well and see it work, I think was a time where you saw he was, he was truly special. I think it's great that people are expecting me to be one of the leaders of the teams of the future, most likely. I fully would love to accept that role and just be the best uh, player and leader that I could be just to help this team become the best team we can possibly be. Sean, um, very feisty guy. I knew then that he had a special capacity to visualize the game. The first thing that stuck out was his toughness. You know, he just wasn't ever afraid. We were playing against a team that really uh, was probably a little more talented than us, but Sean just really uh, ran crazy that night. Um, just an amazing experience to be able to be around a kid like that at that time, and now you see where he is, and you can really appreciate that. Marco, both these quarterbacks, Tom Brady, Jared Goff, they've been upright all season. Two most stable offensive lines in the league protecting them. But the Rams rush from the interior with Aaron Donald. Now a two-time defending NFL defensive player of the year. That's the strength, though, of New England's offensive line. No, wait, no, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. They're both great at doing it, but what the Patriots don't have and what most of the other NFL uh, teams don't have is a guy like Aaron Donald. One game. Oh, we here. Who you work for right here? Who you work for? All that training you did. All everything you do is for this right here. Come on, hey. Come on. Well, the postseason refrain for the Los Angeles Rams has become, we ain't done yet. The immortal words of Marcus Peters. Win or lose, it's over after tonight. This is Super Bowl 53. It's going to work. It's going to work. It's going to work. It's going to work. It's going to work.
Great starting field position, the 40-yard line, and Brady under center. From his right, Julian Edelman motions in the left slot. They will run it again. Michelle working back to his left. Aaron Donald from behind dropped him with help from Michael Brockers. And he gets down to the 34-yard line. Hey, blow up! Come on! Come on! For this second down and seven snap. Opening drive of the game. Chuck and snap back to Brady, looking right on the way. He gets rid of it quickly. It's tipped up in the air. It is intercepted! Picked up at the 27-yard line. It's third down and long, and here's where you have to win. Brady in the shotgun. He has the snap. Wants to get rid of it quickly. Left side caught by Edelman. Stutters and goes at the 20. He's out of bounds left side with the first down. They take the snap. Play fake. Looking middle. It's Gronk. Alone at the 40. A catch in Rams territory. Goes out left side line in front of Marcus Peter. Breaking to his right. It's White. He's tackled after a short gain. Dante Fowler Jr has been a force on run defense. And so they forced New England to settle for a field goal try on their second drive and looking for the game's first points. A 46-yard attempt from the right hash out of the hold of Ryan Allen. Gonskowski ready. Good snap, the hold is down. The kick clears the line and it is no good. He missed it wide left. Hey, real quick, here's the thing that we can do now. This is what's beautiful about what we got going. Starts with me, we get efficient runs, then we get into some tempo. We're not allowing ourselves to get in any sort of rhythm. But if we do that, we know how quickly we can flip the switch on people. Yep. All right, so everybody take a deep breath. Starting over, let's go, okay? These are some <laughs> photos we have here of Sean running in the semifinal game. Uh, that particular game was uh, outstanding. Uh, football game and great, uh, great performance by Sean in that night. But I wanted to talk to you about Wham Naked. We're playing the um, third round of the playoffs against Shaw High School out of Columbus, Georgia. So we're down by five. So we call timeout. Sean comes to the sideline. And then Sean just interjects. He says, let's run Wham Naked. So we kind of shrug our shoulders and look at each other and say, okay, go with it. So Wham Naked is, we got all backs in the old traditional wishbone. Sean reverses out, fakes back to left half back, off tackle right. It's a pile up of 21 players right here on the right side of the ball. And then Sean pauses, comes back, runs around the left end untouched. Faked out everybody in the stadium. So uh, that was a huge play. That's what's called Wham Naked. It's kind of one of those big plays in Marist folklore, you know, football folklore that's uh, very huge and will always be a, a big part of our program. Good stop. Let's go, man. Get these guys going. Here we go. Robert Woods, let's ride. Now Woods motions to the left to join Brandon Cooks. Back the other way. They give it to him on the jet sweep. Right side. I see you, Robert Woods. Tip pass caught by Reynolds at the 45. This is what you wanted to see. When the Rams get into tempo and they're on the ball, they can lock you into a certain defense and get after you. Go. Hurry up! Third down and three. Looking right all the way. He finds a target. It's broken up. Jared Goff off to a rocky start, and the Rams will punt. Can the defense get another stop in a scoreless Super Bowl? You're, hope, you're getting pressure on the quarterback. Your back game is covering well. You just have to hope that your offense is able to pick it up. Let's stuff them. They get nothing. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Coverage breaking down. Yes. The ball is on the deck. Oh, He's no. trick sacked. Oh. And it looks like the Patriots dove on it. After two quarters of Super Bowl 53, the Patriots have a 3-0 lead. For the first time in the Sean McVay era, the Rams failed to score in the first half. Hey, you guys are playing your f***s off. Keep, keep competing. They're 0 of 8 on third down today. Here comes the rush. Goff stands in. He deals down the middle. Caught by Robert Woods. First down LA at the 29 of New England. Yeah! Jonathan Jones draped all over number 17 in royal and yellow. Goff, first and 10 from the 29. They want to throw. Goff well protected. He climbs. He throws. End zone all alone. Back of the end zone incomplete to Brandon Cooks. 53-yard try for Greg Zerline. His first attempt this evening. And Greg Zerline got it. Let's go to work. Let's go to work. It's the fourth quarter. Biggest game of both these guys' lives. Someone has to make a play. Left side looking for Gronk at the five. He brings it in. 
Tripping down to the two between three rams. Ah, they run Sony Michelle through the left side for the game's first touchdown. Touchdown New England for a 9-3 lead. 30 to go in regulation, 10-3 Patriots. First and 10 Rams from the 27 of New England. Goff throws right side over the top, looking for Cooks. He's decked at the goal line, incomplete. Deron Harmon, the safety, coming over to separate Cooks from the football. Off his back foot, he throws the ball right side. It's intercepted at the five yard line. A ball intended for Brandon Cooks that Goff put up for grabs and it's picked by Stephon Gilmore. Great, you know, and it's all team right there, baby. Offensive line was blocking great. Running backs were ru running very hard. It makes my job a whole lot easier when I got great teammates and great coaches like that. He didn't know he was going to be a coach as a young kid or in high school yet, but he was blessed to get along well with people. And at a very, very young age, his mother and I could see in his eye that he was really an engaged, competitive kid. We used to laugh about it, you know, even if we went to the you know, roller skating rink and, you know, and he wanted to make sure he was <laughs> doing really well. I mean, as a young kid, we'd look at each other and go like, that guy's, he's really focused, man. <laughs> you, could, you could see at an, at an early age that uh, he had the good blessings to be able to, you know, do some good things. It's an exciting time to be an L.A. Ram, and we can't wait to go to work, roll our sleeves up, and figure out a way to consistently give this fan base and this great city of LA a winner and a team that they can be proud of week in and week out. You know, I knew that something was special when I saw the Rams organization from the very beginning a couple of years ago. I could just feel a special kind of culture. You could see this coming. It's love being able for Sean to come back to be a great reflection and a good kid from Atlanta that's doing well. It's just, uh, thank God, what a, what a blessing and a miracle. And we're looking forward to having a great game Sunday. Here comes Gotskowski. He boots it with the right foot, and his kick is good. It, it, this is a tough way to go out if, if you're a Rams player, Rams in the Rams organization. One, because you've had such a great season and the way this thing ended. Confetti flies from the sideline. Screamers pour down from the roof. Throughout this third season after their homecoming to Los Angeles, it was an NFC championship with 13 regular season wins, another division title, and playoff triumphs, a season we will never forget. Unfortunately, it falls one victory shy of a world championship. The Super Bowl is so far and away the biggest sporting event in our country. The only thing I can compare it to globally is the World Cup for Brazil, Argentina, Belgium, Germany. When you lose it, it is an automatic dissension and dysfunction creator. You lose the Super Bowl, you take a beating. And you better have a damn strong locker room to overcome it. And I think the Rams have it and they will be fine. Okay, guys. You go right ahead. Any uh, reflections now that you've got at least a few hours away from the sure. role? Yeah, you know, I think, uh, I think initially, you know, you're so disappointed. And, and I think sometimes if things are always easy, you never really get a chance to be tested and find out. And, but also the unfinished element of it uh, will just continue to drive you in the right way as you move forward. We'll take this week to really kind of, you know, uh, get a lot of things done. And then, uh, and then we'll give the coaches, a, you know, a couple weeks off before we go to the combine. So I think we all need it a little bit. The most special thing about Indianapolis, I believe, is our hospitality. We do lots and lots of conventions here. I mean, most all the hotels are all interconnected with each other. They're connected to the stadium. It's just our Midwest attitude, really. We'll welcome everybody. The Combine brings a lot of people to town. You know, from a business standpoint, it's always been great because you've got all the support personnel for it. Scouts, coaches, the trainers, the doctors. People still need to be able to get out and have a little bit of entertainment and still have dinner.
It's always one of our better weekends and we always look at it that it's kind of our kickoff the spring for us. Well, this is the best event I think the NFL puts on from a league and logistics standpoint with hotels everywhere and you can kind of run into people and talk. And I, when I can walk down the street and bump into Gus Bradley or bump into Sean McVay or bump into this person or that person, be able to pick their brain for five or 10 minutes or go out to dinner and then you, you're sitting next to this person and, and this coach and, and you can hear the conversations and kind of be a part of it. Um, that to me is what makes it so special. So if we open breaking news will be this, Aaron Donald will be at OTAs, <laughs> training camp. Can't promise you he'll practice a lot, but he'll be there. Other than that, yeah. I think I'll let y'all set the tone. What was the process like immediately after the Super Bowl and the days afterwards? Just trying to absorb it and put it all into perspective. What does the process look like to getting back to in 2019? It was an odd game we saw in Atlanta. He's the general manager of the defending <laughs> NFC champion, L.A. Rams. He's Les Snead. The interesting thing about 19 is you can't just pick up where you left off. You got you to gotta start over. So it pushed that boulder up the hill. But like I said, it, at least we know we're capable of getting it up there. Like all losses, you know what? You're going to replay them in your head. They're going to sting. They're going to hurt. And then there also there's going to be that element when, uh-oh, there's some fuel there. And that fuel's going to fire you up to begin 2019 in that journey. You know, we always talk about this, and this is kind of the message moving forward. You want to learn from the past, you produce in the present, and that's kind of controlling what you can control, and you prepare for the future. And that's really, to me, the way that you kind of just stay in the moment one day at a time. A lot of people say, oh, you'll be back. It's not quite like that. What excites you about coming to the Combine each year? Really what excites you is getting a chance to see a lot of people that you've built relationships with in this business, chance to connect and talk with them, but then also, you know, start to see what this draft entails. Our personnel staff's done an excellent job of really getting ahead as far as kind of vetting these players, having an idea of what their tape looks like. This really represents kind of the start of that process for us as coaches, so that's what's exciting about it. We're looking for football players. Can they play football or not? So you just got to kind of take each player case by case and utilize the time in Indy uh, the best way you can. Because of the time that uh, we lost just based on playing later into the season than we ever had before, uh, you feel like you've got to have some time made up. But, but this does represent a chance to really start to get ready for 19, evaluating the players for the draft and doing everything necessary to really start attacking the offseason the right way. All right, here you go, brother. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, guys, go ahead. Asking for the timeline on Cooper's return, and how did his loss impact what you were Yeah, I mean, Cooper's a great player. I, I think when you just talk about the things that he was able to provide for our football team, um, you know, he was so consistent, so versatile in terms of a guy that can really, he's a great productive player in the run game. Obviously, in the past game, he did an outstanding job. He's already doing things that I think are probably way ahead of what uh, normally would be the process from an ACL. But, you know, we, we feel really good about the way that he's going to respond. And, and I would just say that it's something that we're going to monitor this offseason, but we fully expect him to be ready to go for training camp. Okay, thanks, guys. I don't think you process it as, like, you know, the first time they say, okay, like, you know, we think you've got the ACL. At the time that he told me, you know, as I'm trying to process these things, they actually let Anna and my son back down into the training room and be able to see them um, and really just seeing like my son's face just light up when he sees me and, and smiling. You know, he doesn't know what's going on, but you know, just can't put things in perspective. I'm, I'm extremely blessed to be where I am and to do what I do, sitting here in this training room with this injury for a reason, and there's going to be great things to come from this. Ninety. Within a few weeks of after the injury, I told Reggie I want to do something just to start off. I want to do high intensity interval training stuff because I felt like that was something that some of the hormones that it releases could be good to help speed up this recovery. So I you know, was just doing upper body, you know, trying to get blood flow, heart rate up, and you know, it feels good to know that you know I'm getting pushed. I'm I come in here every day knowing that it's going to be a challenge, but. I, think, I, I like to think they have to, you know, hold me back more than they have to push me, but they're doing a good job of, you know, making sure that that progress keeps going forward. Oh, no, last one. Oh, no.
I mean, we've been working out since maybe a month after the surgery. I'll probably start doing more heavier leg stuff in here soon. So just continuing to progress and you know, week by week, add a little more, see how it, see how the knee acts. And you know, so far, everything's been good. So we're just gonna keep adding on. And uh oh, Cup has already had a knee issue that cost him two games this year, holding on to that left knee here. Right when you come out of surgery, it's all. It's just pain, like, you know, it's all pain management. You have to get the, you have to get the joint moving, but everything just hurts. It's one thing, like lifting weights, oh, that hurts. That, that's, you know, that's good pain. This kind of pain was just bad. I'm gonna say this injury has taught me patience. You have to take it step by step. You gotta take it slowly. You got as good as you feel, you have to, you know, check the boxes all the way up to, um, through this nine month mark and has kind of given me a new perspective and um, has refreshed how important those things are. You're telling me it doesn't get looser as you go? It does. So there's a reason that I can't grab mine around? Listen to Jewel, gotta break it in. So why are you getting, so, so, why, so why are you getting, more, getting more upset that I can't grab it and everyone else can and then admitting that it does loosen up? As it goes. John's always the most negative. Is he negative to you guys? Because he, he's only negative with me. I had to get myself mentally. No positive mentally in there. Like, first time, first time doing jumps. Oh, that looked awful. That was terrible. So, Cooper Cup right now is about four months uh, post-op ACL. And right now he's in more so the strength phase of his rehab. And he's also starting a run progression. This is only his third day running on the field. Uh, he's running twice a week. Um, so he'll run again on Thursday as well. But everything now is basically a straight ahead focus, just trying to get him to reestablish his running pattern. I wouldn't necessarily say he's on time or on pace. You know, Cup is right where he needs to be. He's doing a phenomenal job with his rehab. He's a great listener. He pays attention to detail, and, he, and he's a hard worker. And that makes my job so much easier. River dancing. As close to river dancing as we can get. Goff sets up the throw. Lost the ball. Right side. Looking for Cooper Cup. Behind the defense it. 40. He's got the 20. Cooper Cup to the house. Goff throws. Right side. Cooper Cup. Dances in at the pylon. Touchdown, LA. Behind the defense and caught at the 30. Gets through an ankle tackle at the 20. Wow. Cup's going to go. You know, thinking forward to that point, it's, it's tough with this injury. I, 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 say, I always want to be looking forward, but once you get too far ahead, you know, it's it's tough. You get too excited. You get too uh, you get too juiced and realize you know it, it's a long road to getting to step back on the field yet. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to really tell you what it's gonna be like until I'm putting the laces on, strapping up the helmet, and um, being able to run out through that tunnel and go play this game again. So I just get it, it definitely gets my it you know, gives me a little goosebumps thinking about it. But I can't wait for for when that time comes. They didn't have a combine for a while. They had uh, teams, like six or seven teams, got together and brought players in. But different different groups did it. So I'm not sure when the first one was. But I was there. <laughs> have a good day. You too. I got my own cameraman, man. Yeah, bring him on. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a coaching convention, you know, in that uh, a lot of teams used to go to the all of them used to go to the Senior Bowl, and uh, not all of them do that now. So this is really the, the only time that you get to see other coaches and talk with other coaches uh, in the NFL. So. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. How are you? Doing well. Awesome. Thank you very much. Have right. an awesome day. Thank you. Hey, you got your son on staff out. Yeah. Uh, we were together in Dallas for uh, about three years. So. Lower sweep level. So it's great, yeah. I got to coach with my dad too, so it's pretty neat being on both sides of it. I could never really picture myself just kind of buying a ticket and hey, going and sit in the stands for a game. And, hey, good morning. You know, I just always felt like I wanted to be a part of it. Good morning. Uh, loved being around the locker rooms and around the practices and just, just kind of hanging on, on dad's coattails, you know. 
but yeah, it's always something I, I knew I knew I wanted to be involved in football at least some way. You know, Wesley with you, man. That's yeah, awesome. that's a, that's really it's great. Definitely the yeah. best part of the whole thing. It is. It is. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah. So I'll probably get fired. <laughs> I have to move. He's <laughs> the same. Exactly the same. Uh, you know, dad jokes. I try to tell my mom, don't laugh at that. You know, you, you're just encouraging him. But I, I actually got on Twitter just just because. Everyone kept saying, did you see what your dad tweeted? Did you see what your dad tweeted? You know, it's rare to be able to work with your father in any, in any business. And uh, football has been a part of our family forever. It was always the NFL. And uh, wherever we went, we switched hats and shirts. And, and you know, we were all in. How do you sum up what the team was able to accomplish in 18? It, if I summed it up, you figured out what you're capable of. Last year, we, we knew we could win a division, and sometimes it's harder to, to repeat doing that, and we were able to go accomplish that. We also added a couple of internal goals. Win the playoff game, you know, and, and really Boom, you did that, and then you get to, all right, win, win the conference championship, and you did that. So uh, you figured out what you were capable of, and when we started this journey, you were hoping you could do that. When you left it, you knew you could do it.